Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about internet censorship and net neutrality. More specifically, we're going to be comparing the type of censorship that YouTube can do now and the type of censorship that your ISP may be able to do in the future if the net neutrality repeal goes all the way through. And the example that we're going to be talking about is firearms because YouTube recently cracked down on a lot of gun channels. The gameplay you're going to get to see today is Call of Duty World War II. I'm using the sawed off shotgun and kind of grinding out some challenges working toward Chrome Quest. And let me know if the colors and overall quality look good. I have changed some settings here at home. I installed my brand new Elgato 4K60 Pro and I'm still playing around with HDMI settings and the color ranges and things like that. So if it looks a little bit off, let me know. I'm kind of tweaking the colors and trying to make it look just like it used to, which was quite nice. Back on topic, let's talk about YouTube's firearm policy. They made a lot of changes recently that really cracked down on gun channels, and there's a lot of types of firearm content that aren't allowed on the website anymore. I threw the official screenshot up on the page so you can see what they're going on about, but the gist of it is they do not allow content that attempts to sell certain firearms or accessories through direct sales or links to resellers, and they also don't want any manufacturing instructions for certain types of firearm accessories or modifications. On both of these, you're looking at things like silencers, bump stocks, high capacity magazines, carrying belts, or any sort of conversion kit. It's basically the trigger words that you see on the news, the things that all the newscasters are terrified of. They just don't want that on the website at all. Punishments for uploading this type of content include demonetization, video removal, community guideline strikes, and entire channels getting deleted overnight. It hurts gun channels a lot, and the algorithm isn't super bright. What hurts gun channels perhaps more than a rule change is that the rule change is retroactive, so old videos can get hurt too, and you can be affected by something you did five years ago. And the algorithm is not, uh, it's not a person. It lacks context, understanding, and if you trip the wrong keywords, it'll just think you're doing something you're not. So you can make very innocent videos and get striked for it anyway. This is definitely a form of censorship. YouTube is censoring its content and removing the ability of users to express themselves in some ways. However, this censorship is also net neutrality. And you're gonna say, what? That, what's neutral about this? What's neutral about censorship? That doesn't make any sense. I thought this net neutrality was supposed to be a good thing that ends censorship. Not, it, not exactly, it's complicated. So that's why today I wanted to talk about net neutrality internet censorship differences between YouTube and your ISP. A big point of criticism during the net neutrality debate a few months ago was between Google and your ISPs or YouTube and your ISPs content websites. Currently, ISPs cannot discriminate based on content that you want to watch, but YouTube can. ISPs cannot collect and resell your data. Well, up until very recently, they can now, but they couldn't collect and resell your data. But YouTube, Google, Facebook can. Facebook has been in the news a lot about that data collection, reselling, and use, but Google's getting pulled into it. But your ISPs couldn't do that, but another company could. So why can one company be free to censor content, but not another? And why can one company be free to collect and sell data, but not another? Or more accurately, why is it freedom of speech for one company to be able to censor, but not freedom of speech for another company to be able to censor? It seems like the rules don't apply very evenly here. Well, let's take a look at the definition of net neutrality first, which uh, net neutrality is not constitutional freedom of speech on the internet. That is not what it is. And net neutrality is also not mandatory hosting or allowing of all user content, even if it is, well, under US guidelines, freedom of speech. Net neutrality is quite simply equal access to websites. Net neutrality just means that any website you want to visit will load with equal priority. For example, Hulu loads just as fast as Netflix even if Hulu is owned by Comcast and Netflix is their competitor. Comcast would like to allow Hulu to load faster because that's a content that they own and slow down Netflix since Netflix is a competitor. That would not be net neutrality. Net neutrality would be they both load at the same speed. This means that you can visit Pornhub as many times as you want without having to pay any additional adult services fee. And if you are on Comcast, you can go to att.com and research the competitor if you want to. This does not mean that every website has to host content equally or allow all content to be posted on the website, especially when it comes to user generation. 
Under net neutrality, individual websites are free to manage their website however they want, even if it's in a bad way, even if they want to self-censor. It is a freedom of speech issue when it comes to creating content, art, media of any kind, and an enterprise issue in that people should be free to run their businesses however they want to allow websites to manage content as they see fit. And to explain this a little better, to do it the other way around, if websites were not allowed to manage content as they see fit, then Twitter or YouTube or Facebook or any of these big social media sharing sites would be required to host content that users post regardless of what it is regardless of if it's pornography, because pornography is largely protected under freedom of speech, if it's extremely offensive, racist, if it encourages harm on others, if a whole lot of unpleasant things, and they could be required to host it indefinitely and not move it down, they could be required to do a lot of different things with it, but right now websites are in a place where they're viewed as a business or a social sharing entity, and if a user or a user's post were deleted, it could be a constitutional violation of their freedom of speech. Imagine if somebody just came in my chat and decided to type the N-word 1500 times and I banned them, I might have to go to court for that and explain why I denied this man's constitutional right of freedom of speech. So individual websites, there's lots of, uh, individual policing rules allowed and they can do it however they want. So then, why is it also not freedom of speech or enterprise for Comcast to manage its services as they see fit? What if they want to change their content around? What if they want to host, run their business a different way? Why are they forced to behave differently than YouTube or Google? And this was their primary argument in court against net neutrality. And to be honest, it's a pretty good one. It seems crazy to force an ISP like Comcast to host content from a competitor equally as their own and force them to allow customers to access information about their competitors or things that are just wildly negative about their business. The difference is that Comcast, Spectrum, Time Warner, whatever your ISP happens to be, is a type of business called a natural monopoly. A natural monopoly is something you can look up very quickly on Investopedia or Wikipedia or any online resource, but uh, the definition is simply a type of monopoly that exists as a result of the high fixed costs of startup, of operating a business in a specific industry, and additionally natural monopolies can arise in industries that require unique raw materials or unique technology or similar other factors to operate. Examples include electric companies, water companies, and telecommunications companies because of the size of the networks they have to build. These monopolies are generally allowed by most governments, but they allow them to exist with regulation to ensure that consumers get a fair or equitable deal. The two most unique things about a natural monopoly is that the barrier to entry is bigger than almost any other business on the planet. A barrier to entry is how much money it takes for you to enter the industry. For example, most of you probably have enough money to make a lemonade stand outside of your house. Most of you probably have enough money to get a loan to rent a food truck and go into that business, but most of you don't have the $50 billion that's required to start laying fiber all over the country and build your own ISP like Comcast or Time Warner or whatever. The other thing is that natural monopolies tend to have captive customers because, again, they're monopolies and there's going to be a lack of choice in the region. You have to buy electricity from one, maybe two companies. You have to buy water. You have to buy internet services. You don't get a lot of choice choices in these industries. You either take the thing or you do without, and in some cases the thing can be vital. This type of monopoly is very extreme and very overbearing, and they are generally, again, only allowed to exist with regulations. And this is not the same as YouTube's monopoly on video content, which is largely driven by its quality or by user demand. People chose to overwhelmingly watch YouTube and use Google. It wasn't forced upon them. There was a ma many years ago now, but there was a time where YouTube and Google were both scrappy little websites that were considered underdogs and playing with the big boys when they really shouldn't be. And there may come a day in the future where people no longer use YouTube and Google, where they're just completely phased out. But we went to these websites, YouTube in particular, because it did have the highest video quality. It had the best search engine. It loaded the fastest. You didn't have to download the whole video to watch it which was kind of like mind-blowing at the time, and it became incredibly popular. Most people didn't choose their home internet, like Comcast, AOL, Time Warner. It was simply the only thing available in the area, or maybe one of two things available in the area. You had to either have Time Warner or Comcast, or that was it. You didn't get to choose the price or anything, you just kind of had to take it or not use it at all. So in short, not all monopolies are equal, 
and the control that you would get with an ISP monopoly would control literally everything. As a quick example of the type of power different monopolies can exert, let's say you want to watch gun videos on the internet. Let's say that today you want to learn how to build a suppressor and put a high capacity magazine on that. And you also want to, you know, do a little mod kit and make your gun fully automatic. That's what you want to learn how to do. And let's say that you want to go to YouTube to learn how to do this. Unfortunately for you, due to public pressure about firearms, they're very unpopular. Websites and big companies are distancing themselves from it. Advertisers have pulled out and two things have happened, A or B. Let's say then the YouTube monopoly, YouTube has decided to remove them completely and you can't find them on YouTube. Or B, your ISP has removed your ability to access them. In the case of YouTube's monopoly, and YouTube's will say freedom to censor under net neutrality, if you can't find it on YouTube, that sucks. It's been censored, it's been removed, and it's not fair, but that's what you're stuck with. However, you can just go to theguntube.com, which is a real firearm website. You can go to Daily Motion, you can go to Break. Gun channels have moved to Pornhub, you can go to Pornhub. You can go to a third party weird website hosted somewhere and just download full gun videos and watch them. Or maybe you haven't found what you're looking for. Maybe you want to buy a server and host your own gun website. Maybe the hosting companies are a little bit scared of this. Well, you can just buy a server or server farm, set it up in your basement, and make your own website that anybody can view and access, which is kind of a cool thing about the internet. So there's lots of alternatives, and with some effort you will find your gun videos. Let's look at option B. Let's say that your ISP has the ability to discriminate, and unfortunately the ISP is the tube or pipeline through which you access the internet. You would go and you'll find that you don't have access to any firearm website. The gun tube doesn't work, gun broker doesn't work, nothing about guns works. You just get 404 pages, access denied pages, you get rerouted to the Comcast main web page, and it just says that they don't want you to access it. No URL, no search results, nothing that you do will pull up a gun website no matter how hard you try or how hard you search. So you're like, you know what, screw you, I'm gonna buy a server bank and set up a server in my own house, I'm gonna host my own gun website. Then your ISP tells you that they refuse to allow data on it and there's no other ISPs in your area. So your choice is either to move to try to find a new ISP, there's only a couple of them, to see if any of them will allow data to be transferred about guns or maybe you're going to have to start your own ISP in order to transfer that data, which could cost upwards of billions of dollars. And let's say you're super rich and you do that, but then you find out that local cities and counties and states have signed exclusive rights to only allow some companies to lay fiber and have internet in their city. So as you can see, one monopoly is choice-based and the other one is not. You as a user chose to go to YouTube, this site with its curious, strange, stupid rules and censorship and all sorts of bad decisions, and look for guns. And if you didn't find those guns, you can just find them on about 5,000 other websites that are really easy to access. The other monopoly completely removes your choice. If your ISP decided to just remove gun content, you couldn't access it no matter what you did. Literally nothing you did would allow you to access it no matter how long you sat at the computer and tried to do things. So a similar argument can be made for the mass data collection, which is really scary in my opinion. I don't want to downplay that the data collection is a bad thing. It most certainly is a bad thing. But at the end of the day, you knowingly signed up for Facebook, understanding that in some way it would collect your data. You knowingly signed up for YouTube, understanding in some way it would collect your data. In the case of Google and Apple and their phones respectively, I think having a smartphone is almost a requirement to be a functional citizen in today's world. So your choices are more limited there but you could get a Hanway or some other like goofier device and maybe go around that feature. You can also turn off lots of data collection for these websites, or you can use alternatives. There's hundreds of alternatives to Google, YouTube, Facebook that you don't have to use. If your ISP did this, they would just collect data on you and literally nothing you could do would go around that. It would just collect all the time, there'd be no opt in or out, and there'd be nothing you could do about it because they own the pipe of information. So yeah, today's video was, should have been interesting for you. Not all censorships and not all monopolies are equal. To be clear, in my opinion, any type of censorship and any type of monopoly is going to be bad, but all things like life are on spectrums. Some are less bad than others and some exist for good reasons, whereas others exist for bad reasons. So guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.